Bay Trinity Church Pontiac. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Trinity, let's get ready to celebrate Sister Demila Prince and Trustee Robert Harmon as they are getting acknowledged at the 57th United Sisterhood Scholarship in Excellence Award Ceremony, Saturday, April 20th at 11 a.m. Congratulations to you, Sister Demila, as well as you, Trustee Harmon, on all of your excellence. Trinity, have you had Sunday dinner yet? Well, join us next Sunday, immediately following service. That's April 21st. Immediately following service for Legacy Sunday and Sunday dinner, right next door in the Family Life Center on the third floor. I hope to see you there. Calling all the mothers. Sunday, April 28th, immediately following service. The Mothering Ministry will host the Mother's Brunch, where we will talk about mapping through motherhood. Join us immediately following service, April 28th. I hope to see you there. Don't miss out on the opportunity to gather together with other mothers. Trinity, are you a seasoned saint? Maybe you don't know what that is. If you are 70 years and up, the seasoned saint ministry is inviting you to their afternoon of games, which is fun and fellowship for people just like you on May 9th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Next door in the Family Life Center, the Season Saints Ministry will be putting on a beautiful celebration for you and your friends. Stay tuned for more details. Now, Trinity, today is a very special day. Today, we honor a man who has led this church, who is not only a pastor, but also a father. Not only a father, but also a husband. Not only a husband, and also a friend. Pastor, we love you, we honor you. Happy 12th pastoral anniversary. Let's clap it up for him today, Trinity. Well, Trinity, now it's time to go higher in worship. to our God, for he is great and worthy to be praised. Did you come to the Lord's house today to give God praise? Did you come to the Lord's house today to lift his name on high? He is great. There's nobody like our great God. Is there somebody here who can attest to that today, that there is nobody like our great God? If you're here today and you love the Lord and you trust the God, Lord and you want to give him praise, why don't you open up your mouth and shout hallelujah in the house this morning. Praise be to our God. Great God, awesome God, worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad about it today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Lord has brought us here on this special day, not only to celebrate the Lord our God, but to celebrate the man of God that God has placed here in our midst to feed us, to lead us, and to guide us. Now, if you're here today and you thank God for your pastor, you've been given some pom-poms, you've been given your little face mask, Come on and give God praise for our pastor on today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thanks be unto God. Now, if you get to a place in worship today, as you are celebrating, I want to encourage you, go ahead and wave your pom-pom. Go ahead and hold up the pastor's face, and we're going to give God praise for what he has done in our midst through giving us this great, wonderful man of God. Amen? The scripture today, 
Hear me when I call, Psalm 4 says, O God of my righteousness, thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye return? You turn my glory into shame. How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, thou lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing and doing of his holy word. Will you go to God with me in prayer? Father, how we lift up our hearts, we lift up our hands, we lift up our souls unto thee today. For you are great, great and wonderful is your name. We bless you today, God, because you have provided for us everything that we have needed. God, when we called on you, you answered us and we say thank you in our darkness you let the light shine on us and we say thank you when we got knocked down by life lord you picked us up again and we say thank you when we got mired in sin oh god you picked us up cleaned us off turned us around put our feet on solid ground and today god we say thank you oh bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name god we give you praise today now be in this place with us afresh lord god we pray that your anointing will fall upon this worship experience be in the singers and musicians the ushers and the greeters lord god be in every pew touch our deacons and trustees lord god bless the preacher who will come and preach and lord god bless our shepherd his wife and family god have your way in us and we will give you praise honor and glory let the whole church shout amen amen and amen come on as we rest on our feet let's give god a great praise Dr. Bo already declared that we serve a great God. Anybody believe that a great God deserves a great praise? The song says, how great is our God? Sing with me. That means we do it together. How great is our God? From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of our Lord God is worthy to be praised. Come on, if you know he's worthy, shout worthy in this place. Yes, that's a great sound right now. One more time, shout worthy. He's a great God. Oh, let's go. Everybody clap your hands. Come on.
a big, big God. He's a great, big God. He's a great, big God. He's a great, big God. Come on, sing this one more time. How great. How great. Demonstrate this. Sing, I lift my hand. I lift my hand to give you glory. To give you glory. I lift my hand. I lift my hand to give you praise. To give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, let's declare and agree that your praise, your praise shall, continually shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, church, Zion, sing that. Your praise, your praise shall, continually shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, let's sing that to heaven. Sing your praise, your praise shall, continue. shall continually be in my mouth. That's it. Come on, sing that. Your praise, your praise shall continually shall Great. Shall continue to leave me in my 
a great big God. Hey, bigger than any ailment. He's a great big God. Bigger than any devil. He's a great big God. Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, praise the name of our God. Great big God. Great big God and worthy to be praised. You may be seated. Glory to God. Well, we've come today to welcome you to the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church of Pontiac, Michigan, where our youthful and dynamic pastor is the Reverend Dr. John DeVar Tolbert. Come on, give God praise for him in the house. And today, amen, amen. That's your pastor. That's our pastor. Give God praise for our pastor. Amen. At this time, we welcome you all, and we want to give a very special welcome to our first-time visitors. If you are a first-time visitor, could you wave your hand at us this morning? Look at that, look at that, look at that. First-time visitors. How we thank and pray. Y'all need to stand up. Y'all look so good. Everybody need to see y'all. Come on, stand up. First time. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We thank and praise God. You can be seated. We thank and praise God for you. Right here is Brother Frost. He will be reaching out to you if you can before the end of this worship. And I think our ushers have something to give out. Is that correct? All right. We want to thank and praise God for you. If you are online and you are a first-time visitor, we call you FTVs. We want to ask you to put that in the chat and send it to 54244. And we just believe that the follow-up is going to be encouraging and attractive, and you'll want to come back and worship with us either online or here in the sanctuary again. We thank and praise God for you and pray that the Lord will bless you and that your worship experience is extraordinary on today. Amen. Thank God for each of you. We have pastoral reflections now. Brooke Bercy and Brian Tramsu. Philip and Jasmine Gist, Sean and Shelby Dent. Good morning, everyone. When I first joined Trinity, it was still COVID, so my first interaction with Pastor was actually through a Zoom call. I was just sitting there with my parents, quiet with nothing to say, and then he asked me what my name was and what my interests were and how I was doing, and in that moment, I could tell what kind of person he was. Not only is he kind and is he funny, but most of all, he is compassionate. He cares for every single one of his members. Not only has he inspired me to strengthen my relationship with God, but he has made me realize in order to learn how to be unashamed as an individual, I first have to learn how to be unashamed as a believer in Christ. Being at this church and having Pastor Tolbert has changed me for the better. I can feel myself become stronger in my faith and understand the sermons like I never have before. 
Being under your direction, I have learned how to fully be able to let go and give all my worries to God. I have also learned that when things that I need to let go and let God, and that things will start to transpire. I have learned how to be better at praying for others and especially learning how to pray for myself. I have learned to, wa I have learned to walk away and not let other people's judgment dictate how I choose to worship my God. Pastor is truly a leader and it oozes out into the congregation. Yesterday was the homegoing service of my great uncle and I turned around and I saw members of Trinity there to support me and my family. And I knew that God had placed me and my family at the right church at the right time, shedding true light of how important it is to not only go to church, but to be the church wherever you go. When you have a leader who is as compassionate and caring onto others, it oozes out into the congregation. And yesterday truly showed that. I have never felt so loved being at a church and having Pastor Tober as my pastor. I cannot be more grateful for you and what you continue to do in my life and what God continues to do in your life. So I just wanna say thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. And thank you for being an example of what it truly means to be the church. Thank you. Uh, good morning, church family. I just want to say a few things about our amazing pastor right here. Pastor, you have made a significant impact on my life. Not only have you helped me grow mentally, but you helped me grow spiritually, and I can't thank you enough for that. Before I came to Trinity, my relationship with God wasn't the best. But after seeing how you preach his word and how you break it down to where everyone can understand it, it helped me get closer to God. I began praying more. I began giving him more praise throughout the day. And I just became better spiritually. And I can't thank you enough for that. I appreciate the work you do each week to prepare sermons. I love how you not only preach to the congregation, but to us kids in this church. And that makes us feel really special. Throughout my days here at Trinity, you've helped me through some really hard times in life. You've never discouraged me. You always helped me no matter what the problem was. You've always taught me so many lessons and I'm grateful for that. Lastly, I wanna thank your family for everything you do and especially for helping me become a prosperous, glowing black man in this day and age. I love you, Pastor, and I wanna say congratulations on 19 years of being a pastor, my pastor. Good morning, Trinity. Uh, I'm Phil Gist, this is my wife, Jasmine Gist. Um, and uh, we're here on behalf of YA City just to show our love and appreciation to our pastor. Now, interesting fact, we've, uh, we've been a part of Trinity for four years now. And uh, prior to that, pastor and I never knew each other, uh, but we actually have a lot in common. Uh, we both went to the same middle school, Bernie, Bernie Middle School. Uh, we both uh, went to Southfield Lathrop High School. There we go. There we go. Go Chargers. Uh, we both uh, uh, graduated from Western Michigan. Uh, and, and, and funner fact, I'm actually, his, his brother was actually my roommate up at Western. Um, and we all know at Western, Pastor plays Q. Um, I play as Sigma. But we're here to tell you, uh, we don't expect you to be perfect all the time, Pastor, okay? Um, three out of four isn't bad, you know? So, so stand on that. Um, but in all honesty, uh, we just want to show our love and appreciation. You've always been there for us um, through our challenges and, and, and time of need. You've um, always made yourself available. You've always um, been transparent and sharing with us and uh, praying for us and uh, just checking in on us from time to time. And it's uh, definitely something 
um, that we appreciate, and I think it goes to, to speak on how loving and caring you are as a person. Um, so we love you, we appreciate you, we thank you for your leadership, uh, me especially. I'm a, I'm a no pain, no gain type of person. Um, so if I'm not feeling any type of discomfort or, or soreness, I don't feel like I'm getting better. And I appreciate your leadership because you're always pushing us and challenging us. Um, you know, you're saying things like be the church, uh, be blessed to be a blessing, um, and get your temperature up. And if I'm being honest, sometimes I don't feel like getting my temperature up. Um, but like a good leader, you always motivate us to help us to reach our goal. And as believers in Christ, we all share a common goal. Uh, so you say, hey, get your temperature up. Revelations 3.15 says, God's going to spit you out of his mouth if you're lukewarm. It's like, all right, I got to get my temperature up, you know. It says, uh, hey, you know, don't give God your leftovers just because you're busy with the things that he blessed you with. Okay, I got to put in that work. So I appreciate that motivation, and I pray that God continues to use you um, to, to motivate us, to push us, to reach our goals. So thank you, Pastor, and we love you. Thank you, thank you, church. Um, again, with my husband, Phil, I'm Jasmine Gist, and we just really want to show our appreciation. Uh, first and foremost, for just showing us sincere love. Um, you know, we've had some, some troubling times, and um, you don't always find somebody who you can feel just genuine love from. And so anytime we're in your presence or anytime you text or call, just know that we truly appreciate that. Um, and as far as being an example of living a life of faith, that means a lot. You know, oftentimes when we face trials and tribulations, myself personally, I'll put up a wall in a minute. And I'll turn away and sit back like, God, what's going on? But you have just continuously showed us over and over again to keep the faith. And we truly appreciate you just being that living example. And lastly, before we leave, I cannot leave this podium without showing appreciation to the lovely woman sitting next to you, Lady Ashley. There you go, there you go. Thank you. Yes. Trinity, what a gem, right? What a gem. Lady Ashley, I, I just sincerely appreciate you specifically as a wife, being a helpmate. I know being a helpmate to, to my husband, I can't imagine being a helpmate to a pastor, but you do it with such sincerity and, and genuineness and cheer, and it's just beautiful to see. So we truly thank you. And again, Pastor and Lady Ashley, we just wanna thank you on today. We love you and we appreciate everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Shelby Dent, and um, for my reflections, I want to thank you, Pastor, for your leadership and for your friendship, for your leadership and constantly equipping us with the daily walk, the daily fire, our classes, um, your teaching on Sunday, Bible class, you have truly given us growth in our experience at Trinity. I thank you for your friendship, whether it be a checkup after a surgery a show up in the countryside of Georgia, <laughs> or a call up on a difficult holiday. I thank you so much for everything that you have done. Uh, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate your competitive nature. <laughs> and that you are a fun and personable pastor. For that, I am grateful. Thank you. Good morning, Trinity. Um, when Dickie McGee asked us, my wife and I do reflections, 
I had a few things to say. Only a few things. <laughs> what type of man is this? It's amazing how God works, wouldn't you agree? I met Pastor Tobert about 15 years ago uh, at my parents' church. We was a pastor at a People's Community Baptist Church in Detroit where my parents bragged you know, about him, where my t twin brother became a deacon under him, and now my wife and I proudly serve under him. What type of man is this? If you compare him to, to the figures in the Bible, who would you find? Abraham, a man of faith? Moses, a figure who leads his people? King Solomon with all his wisdom? Or one of the 12 disciples? What type of man is this? I'm glad you asked, and here's my answer and my reflection. What type of man is this? I experience and see a husband, a father, a brother, a counselor, a friend, but most of all, a servant of the Most High God. My pastor, John D. Tolbert the kind of man that I'm striving to be. What type of man is this? Come on, give God praise for these reflections about our dynamic pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for what you have shared. And I know that each of you has your own story you could tell. Each of you has been impacted by, in some way by this dynamic man of God. I want to thank God for him personally, for being my pastor and now my boss. Amen but we met under far different circumstances as he was pastor of my home church. And so I was the daddy, now he's the daddy. <laughs> Just want you to know, Pastor, Sister Ashley and family, we love you and we thank and praise God for you. Amen, amen, amen. Well, it's time to worship the Lord through our tithe and offerings today. The tithe is something that we owe. Amen. God loves a cheerful, hilarious giver. And we want to encourage you to give unto our great God. Now, it's a special day, and you should have received special envelopes to give to our pastor on today. Did you receive those envelopes? Amen. Now, put something in them something big and pretty in them. Amen. Come on and give, not until it hurts, but till it feels good Amen. that you have been a blessing. We want to encourage you to bless this pastor and you can go online and you can use Givelify or Cash App or, or uh, uh, there another way. There's a Cash App on the screen, Dr. John D. Tolbert. We want to encourage you to give cheerfully there's somebody that's got a hundred dollar praise in your uh, spirit right now. You want to give to God on behalf of our pastor. The basket in the center 
is for the pastor. Did you get that? And so we want to encourage you to give cheerfully, and the others are for the church on either side. All right. We good? Upstairs, you got your envelopes? All right. Come on, ushers, lead us. Everybody stand as we come and bring our gifts to the Lord and to his man, his servant, his, the first family today. Come on. Let's hear this choir.
preaching time. And we have a preacher in the house. And so we want to introduce him to you. Follow the introduction. Following the introduction will be from songs from our extraordinary choir at the Trinity Church. Come on now. And then we'll hear from the man of God, Pastor Dorian Cass is a native of Southfield, Michigan, and is on a mission to encourage, empower, and motivate a generation. Shortly after finishing college in 2002, he acknowledged God's call to the ministry and began reaching out to young people everywhere. The fifth of six children, Pastor Cass was born in Dearborn, Michigan. At an early age, his family moved to Southfield, Michigan, a nearby suburb of Detroit where he attended Birmingham Public Schools and would later attend Olivet College where he studied biology and organic chemistry. The son of a bishop, Pastor Cass' whole life has been spent on the front lines of the struggle for change, both in individual lives and whole communities. This struggle for change has exposed him to the struggles of communities in the deepest of poverty in the inner city, to communities of great affluence, as well as those torn by racism. Drawing from his diverse background, Pastor Cast is said to have, have God-given insight well beyond his years. He has parlayed his unique experiences into a perspective that speaks to an entire generation which has allowed him to deliver his passionate and articulate message to wide-ranging venues, from youth groups to churches to universities and high schools. Pastor Cast is the pastor at Life Application Ministries Christian Church in Warren, Michigan, where Bishop Adolphus Cast has served as senior pastor. He is married to Jalisha Cast and they have five children. Right now, we want to stretch our hands out to him and say, Pastor Cast, preach the word. Pastor Cast, we need a word from the Lord. Pastor Cast, let God use you. Preach, preach, preach.
Lord, I could have lost my mind so many times. But Lord, Lord, you kept me. God, you kept my mind sober and safe.
over and over, over and over, to God. was familiar with the grace and mercy of God. I wish the redeemed of the Lord would say so today. That it is of his mercies that we are not consumed. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I don't know where I'd be. I'd be like a ship without a sail. Like a ship tossed and driven, battered by the angry sea. I ain't even come to do all this today, but the Holy Ghost is here to set free, to deliver. might be ready to move on with the program but we have to give room for the Holy Ghost yeah we have to give room for somebody's praise because I guarantee you, you don't know what it took for somebody to get here so if you would have a little patience with some of us that had to fight through dangerous toils and snares sickness and disease to get into the presence of God we got to thank him a little while hallelujah to God be the glory for the things he's done. Hallelujah. We bless your name today, Jesus. Excuse me while I bless his name. We bless your name today, Jesus. Excuse me while I talk to my Savior for a minute. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is nobody like you in heaven or in earth. You are the Lion and the Lamb. The Rose of Sharon. Mary's baby. We love you today. The lover of my soul, my keeper, my deliverer, my peace, my joy, my strength. When I'm unable to stand, you make me stand. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, bless his name today. If you would, just clap your hands. I wish you would agree with me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to try to behave myself because I just met some of y'all. But if you, if you only knew what God had done for me. I'm going to try to act like I got sense, Reverend Doctor, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My God, my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank God for the spirit being ushered in today. He inhabits the praises of his people. And I don't know everybody in here, but I know a few of his people are in here today. Of that I am certain. A few of his folks is in here today. Some of my brother and sisters are in here. My kinfolk is in here today. And I am so grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. To God be the glory. Y'all know God doesn't have to show up just because we had church. So we ought to thank him for visiting with us and dwelling with us here in this place I'm honored to be in the house of the Lord one more time I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of 
the Lord. Again, my, man, my name is Pastor Dorian Cast, and I'm going to say my little speech and move on out the way. Everything's been done. I'm going to just try not to mess it up. Yeah, yeah. We done had church. We've been ministered to. We've been edified. So my job was to just not mess it up. But I am grateful and I am honored uh, to be here tonight to celebrate your one or this morning uh, to celebrate your wonderful pastor. Can we give the Lord a hand praise once again for the good Reverend Dr. John Tolbert. We thank God for him. We do. We do. We do. And I am honored to receive the invitation. You could have called anybody to be here today and they would have dropped everything that they were doing to be here. So I'm honored um, by the invitation and, and even more so by the invitation to minister um, to such a great and wonderful and notable congregation. But uh, this is my friend too, for real. So when your friends that know you call you, it means a lot. Yeah, it means a lot. And when I say we know each other, I ain't talking about the preacher know. You know, preachers know each other. No, we've known each other since we were kids. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've known each other since we were uh, teenagers in that uh, uh, very uh, specific sense of humor and keen wit. He's had it since he was a kid, y'all. Like, he didn't just get it now when he got in the pulpit. He would sit at the house. My brother used to cut everybody's hair in. And we'd be at the house, all the fellas packed in my parents' basement. Um, and my brother would be cutting hair. And the good reverend doctor would be pontificating back around about 93, 92 in the basement. And it's funny, and I, and I mean this. My brothers and I still quote you from something you said when we were kids in my parents' family room. And whenever we're talking about something, we say, as the good reverend doctor John Tolbert says, no. They're going to hate you for whatever you do. This was his word back in 92. And uh, we still quote it to this day. No matter what, just know they're going to hate you for whatever you do. And then he got into Bonneville that was parked outside. And he used to drive to Bonneville and drove off. I, I remember, I remember well. Um, so I'm just honored to celebrate my friend today and uh, him in the pastorate. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. We celebrate his lovely wife. God bless you, women of God. Yeah, yeah, we can't celebrate the man of God without uh, celebrating the woman of God um, because uh, she enables and facilitates whatever you see uh, of him doing and being on behalf of this great gospel. Well, I'm, I'm going to get into the word and get out of your way. We're going to go into Proverbs chapter number three. I do believe the Holy Spirit has something that he wants to say today. Um, thank God for all of my family and friends I got friends and my cousin up in here at Deacon Lord this is just wonderful I'm right at home I'm uh, feeling good Phil came up here and gave words I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm right at home and, and so I'm gonna tell y'all pastor told me to be myself my wife told me to behave myself and pastor told me to be myself so I'm act like I'm at home let me take this jacket no if you would stand with me in reverence of reading the word of God, I'm going to read out of the English Standard Version, Proverbs chapter number three, very familiar passage of scripture, verse five and six. And it says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him, notice him, see him, be taught and instructed by him in all your ways and he will make straight your paths let's pray dear heavenly father we glorify you today we lift up your great name we're honored to be in your presence today we thank you for everything that you have done you've done more than enough if you never do another thing so today we stand with hearts filled with gratitude that we've been called into such a wonderful gospel we confess that we are not capable, able, nor worthy to carry such a great word, testify to such a great God, but you have called us to, so I'm asking by the power of the Holy Spirit that I would be empowered to speak and your people would be empowered to hear what the Spirit is saying. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will both be acceptable in your sight. Direct every one of my words that they be for the edification of your people and the glory of your great name. And we'll be forever grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, what I'd like to deal with this morning by way of subject is everywhere all at once. Everywhere all at once. Yeah, I know that's the movie. Um, and uh, so maybe uh, somebody Google that movie and come up, stumble across uh, this message. Everywhere all at once. I am, uh, I was so blessed by the words that were shared uh, regarding your pastor and the sorts of things that were highlighted about his character. The phone calls, the questions of how are you doing? Stopping by funerals and things of that nature because too often, and I want to ensure that when I leave here, we continue to celebrate the man of God and his wife properly because too often we celebrate big, big and grand occasions. There's building going on, there's vision uh, coming to pass, and I do want to say I'm always edified when I step into a church that's healthy in these days and times, that y'all didn't just survive the pandemic. I, you got to consider yourself blessed. I go and have been to a lot of churches, and everybody don't look like Trinity. I'm telling you that right now. God has been gracious and kind, because I know a lot of pastors that are in different lines of work now after the pandemic, so it speaks to your faithfulness and your dedication to preaching, teaching, uh, and edifying the people of God. But uh, uh, too often I see pastors and men and women of God celebrated at the wrong time and for the wrong things. And a lot of it stems because we have a wrong conception of God. Because if I believe that God gives shepherds after his own heart, if I'm going to celebrate and acknowledge a gift from God, the giver has to be known well in order to understand what he gave me. Okay, if you come from God's heart, I got to know God's heart to know what's valuable about you. Y'all ain't going to hear me today. If y'all act like I got a church for just a few minutes, we'll have a talk and we'll go on home. If you really know what's valuable about God's gift, you must first know God well. Because he gives shepherds after his own heart, meaning he chose them for his own reasons. People misconstrue the scriptures. They say David was a king after God's heart. And they like talking about how David went after God's heart. But that's not really the essence of what that meant. That meant y'all picked the first one, Saul. David is the one I get to pick. So when it says David was a king after God's heart, meaning it was after God's choosing and for God's reasons. Because people have their reasons for picking. That don't mean they're the same as God's reasons. This ain't even my message, but if you don't know God, you won't know his reasoning. See, people didn't know God's reasoning. That's why they couldn't recognize David when he showed up. If y'all know your Bible, they picked Saul because he was tall and he looked tough. I thank God tall isn't a requirement for leadership in God's church anymore. I am grateful for the evolution of God's church. But we have our reasons for picking. They looked around. They said they want a king. And they said, well, he's head and shoulders taller than everybody else. And he looks like he can lead us into battle. That was their choosing. Saul fell and God said, I'm going to pick the next one. And God picked after his heart, not just because he liked David, but he knew what was coming next. Oh, see, that's why you got to know why God is picking. Because what do you do when you pick Saul because he is tall and Goliath is on his way? Y'all missed that whole thing. They liked Saul because he was tall and Goliath was on his way. What do you do when your tall man is now short? What do you do when the thing you like most about him is of no value? You say, God, you choose. You say, God, your heart has to pick the next one because I picked him because he was tall, dark, and handsome. I picked her because she was fine and wore a move, something dress. But this time, God, I'm going to need to pick after your heart. And if we don't know God, you won't know why he gave you who he gave you. And so I came today, and I, and I promise y'all, I don't want no trouble. Well, maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. And, I, and this, was, this was already in my plans. I, you know, I think, believe one of the reasons we miss God's gifts and, and we miss what's valuable about his servants is because we have a misunderstanding of who God is. 
We can't find him. We spend our whole lives seeking him. People's faith break down because they're like, God, where are you when I need you? Speak, say something. And we spend our whole lives in pursuit of God. And a lot of us can't find him. And I came to tell you it's because many of us have a wrong idea of God. You know what the problem is? You think he's big. I don't want no trouble. I know y'all just said it. We all sing it. My God is big. So str- That's my joint too. So strong and mighty. Only problem is God isn't big. Okay. Y'all like, who did you invite to preach? <laughs> Give me a quick second. Stick with me. God is not big. See, there's a couple problems with conceptualing God as big. First and foremost, it is a matter of association. See, if you conceptualize God as big, you will associate him with big things. You will associate him with the grand occasion, the big church, the big personality, the big event. Stirring emotions. If you think he's big, you will associate him with big things. And the problem is, God isn't big. People walk into a church and they see a thousand people there. They think God must be there. God ain't big. They walk into a little church with just a few people and they say, God must not be here. Because a big God can't fit in a little church. I came to tell you, God ain't big. Yeah, you've been saying, God, where are you? Where is the big miracle? Where is the big answer? And the problem is, he's not big. He's omnipresent. Okay, okay, okay. You got to make a distinction. We got to talk about who he really is. He's not big. He's everywhere. Uh, See, see, a big God can't fit in small spaces, but an omnipresent God is everywhere. If y'all act like I got a church for a few minutes... We'll learn a little bit about God and we'll go on home. God is not big. He's everywhere. Jeremiah 23, 23 and 24 says, he's talking about himself, am I? A God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Say of the Lord, do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord. He said, you can't hide in a small space and get away from me. And I'm big enough to feel heaven. God's not big. He's everywhere. It's a misconception to chase after a big God. If I'm trying to teach somebody about a big God, I can't teach them about our God. Trying to call God big is like trying to call the air big. How can I introduce you to the concept of air by trying to first describe its dimension? How you gonna get your arms around the air? How you gonna find out where is the air in the room? I can't listen. God is not big because it speaks of proportion and comparison. Big is a comparative statement and it is a statement of dimension. God does not have dimension nor does he have size that can be compared to anybody or anything. Big compared to what? Who you gonna stand next to God and measure God by? Who you gonna stand next to God and size him up? He ain't big, he's everywhere. You can't be big unless you can measure who you gonna stand him next to and measuring what could make him short? Who and what could make him small? He's not big, he's everywhere. Not only is he omnipresent, he is holy, he is pure, he is undefiled. There's nobody like him, there's nobody beside him. He counsels with himself. He ain't got nobody to talk to. Yes, it's self if he want to do what he going to do. He's raw. He's uncut. Yeah, if that's your language. 
He's raw. He's uncut to be holy. He's holy, holy, holy. He's separate, separate, separate. He's different, different, different. Higher, 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 above all, through all, in you all. But he's holy. And what that means to be holy is it means to be pure. I mean, he's not mixed with anything else. What that tells us about God's nature is he is elemental in nature. Y'all remember your periodic table, your charts from high school? Chemistry that you don't remember? I don't either. I majored in organic chemistry. Still don't, don't ask me no questions. There's a few things I do recall. And what makes the, 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 the things on the periodic table is that they are elements, meaning they are pure. They are not mixed, meaning that if you got a little bit of it, or a lot of it, you got the same thing. Because they're not mixed with anything. So it's the same thing and it maintains, listen to me, it maintains the same properties all the way down to an individual atom. So meaning if you got a bucket of it or an atom of it, you got the same thing. It's going to act the same. It's going to perform the same. It's going to do the same thing because it is an element. It's pure. You can't divide it and make it act different. You can't put it in a small space. God is pure. You can't cut him up and make him act different. You can't dice him and put him in a small room because he's pure. He's holy. If you got a little bit of him, you got all of his nature. Am I in a church today? Has anybody ever ran into God in your basement? He ain't big. He's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you got a little, if you got an atom of an element, you got the same thing. It's copper whether you got a gallon of it or an atom. Oh, God. He ain't big. He's everywhere. So he can fit in your small, tight situation. I got to go because I'll stick with that. But he ain't, a, he ain't big. He's everywhere. That's why when Jesus say, if you're looking for me when you pray, you ain't got to stand in a football field. You can find me in a closet. My God, he ain't big. He's everywhere. If you don't know who God is, how you going to look for him? See, that's the problem. You've been looking for a big God. You've been looking for the thunders to rumble, the seven uh, thunders to utter. You've been looking for the mountain to shake. You've been looking for walls to tumble. What about the still, small voice? You can't find him because you don't know who you're looking for. Why does this matter? Number one, because it's fun preaching. I'll admit that. But this, is, this doesn't matter just for a philosophical point. This doesn't matter just because it's fun to say. Why does it matter that we have the appropriate conception of God that is big but everywhere? As omniscient, omnipresent. That he is all God anywhere he is God. And that's everywhere. If you don't take nothing else away from my message today, remember that he's all God anywhere he is God. And that's everywhere. He's God on the mountaintop. And he is God in your closet. He is God of the universe. And he is the God of my salvation. He's all God anywhere he is God. And that's everywhere. Whither shall I go from his presence? If I make my bed in hell. That's an everywhere God. That ain't a big God. If I take the wings of a dove and fly. If I go down, he's everywhere. And wherever he is, he's everything he is. He's all God. Anywhere he is God. In us everywhere. Why does it matter that I know him that way? And how does it help me celebrate the man of God? Is our text today tells us. Yeah, I ain't forgot about my text. Mind my homiletical manners, pastor, please. Text says, trust in the Lord. With your whole heart. And lean not on your own understanding. I taught this text to my church before. And the problem with 
trusting in God with our whole heart is in the year 2024, it's really hard to gather your whole heart. We got so many distractions. You ever prayed and hear your phone buzzing? You be like, Lord, I'm trying to stay in prayer. Is that a text? Is that a DM? Okay, forget it. I'm going to look. Yeah, it's hard. You go to pray and you think about the bills and the kids and your marriage and so that ain't even what I got down here for. How in the world can I give God my whole heart when my heart is consistently divided? My intentions are divided. My motives are divided. My, my, my affections are divided. I love holiness, but I still love to get drunk. Yeah. When I would do good, evil is always present. That that I would not do, that's the very thing that I do. And the one thing I plan on doing, that's the one thing I don't do. We like Paul, and I want to give him my whole heart. So I challenged my church. I said, well, let's do this. You try to give him your whole heart for an hour. Try five minutes. Because he's not a big God. He's an everywhere God. Oh, yeah, because a big God needs 48 hours of prayer. But an everywhere God can answer with a, to a help. Yeah, I got a few saints in here. We ain't been fasting. We ain't been reading our Bible. Yeah, we ain't been in church. We ain't been laying on our face. We didn't come with an eloquent prayer. God, I come to you as an empty vessel before a full fountain. No one said, help! And God was right on the way. Yeah, he can respond. Matter of fact, he's so everywhere that he can be there before you got words. I know some folks where you don't know what to pray, what you ought to pray. The spirit will help because he knows your thoughts from afar off. He's at your thoughts before they get to you. He's at your situation before it happened to you. So he's responding to your tears before you even got to him. Okay, you better know who we talking about when I say God is good. So a lot of people just give up on prayer because we're not good at it. When God is big enough to fit in whatever you decide to give him, don't get ahead of yourself. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Where do you trust in God? What areas of your life? Do you confine him to and where do you lean on your own understanding? You want to know how you identify where you trust him and where you lean on your own understanding? What do you pray about and what do you just decide to do? Now, if you think he's a big God, you will pray about the big things and decide the little things. And the text says in all your ways but you think God's so big he can't care about this but in all your ways he came to tell you today I'm not too big to care about that I know the number of hairs on your head I know when a sparrow falls so if in all your ways because I'm all God anywhere I am God and that's everywhere I'm God when you brushing your teeth I'm God when you decide what you're gonna wear to church today you ain't even pray about that did you uh some of y'all probably should have but that's a whole other story because you trusted your Yourself. But God is everywhere. He cares about everything concerning you. There ain't anything too small that you can't take it to God in prayer and trust that he will hear, he will answer, and he will deliver. Your whole heart. In text says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your path. This is why I know we don't know who we serving. Because we don't serve him with all of our ways. As a matter of fact, the text says to acknowledge him. And a lot of people read that as like, tip your cap to God in all your ways. I can see you, God. <laughs> yeah, that's how some of y'all be doing. Sit down at your meal. I see you, God. Well, the real meaning of that word in the Hebrew, acknowledge, means to notice. Notice him. To know him in all of your ways. So if you think he's big, you might only look to notice him 
in the big events. But I came to instruct Trinity today to notice him in all your ways. Because God ain't too big to be instructed or to be seen, to be found in all of your ways. Yeah, you can look into the universe and declare his handiwork, but you can look through a microscope down to an individual atom and be awed by the mind of God. He in the microscope too. So he's in your everyday, mundane things. Listen, three, three ways. He said, if you notice me, if you understand who God is and you deal with him appropriately, number one, you'll look for God-sized lessons even in small things. See, some of our lives fall apart and we get mad at God and say, God, why didn't you tell me? And he said, I've been trying to tell you. You didn't listen till you lost your job. But you thought I was too big to talk. Proverbs says, consider the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be made wise. See, you wait for a big voice when God will instruct you with the tiniest of things. That if you know God isn't big, you'll be instructed by, the, by every little thing. He was talking to you when your coworker came into you and said, um, you're going to take a long lunch again? God was all in that again and you, you heard the again but you missed that God was talking when she said again but God is too big to fit in again from a heathen no less but my God is all God anywhere he is God and that's everywhere he'll talk to you through a donkey if you let him Okay, I, I'm just trying to help you find God in all of your ways. Don't wait until your life falls apart to start looking for God. The text says notice him in everything and he'll direct your path. He'll talk to you before cancer shows up. He'll talk to you before you get the divorce papers. He'll talk to you before you get to your bankruptcy. If you know you don't have to be in a big situation to hear from God. He sent us to the ant to be instructed. What kind of big God talks to you through an ant? An omnipresent one does. Secondly, if you know who God is, you will seek to be sanctified and live holy, even in the smallest and most ordinary ways. You know what one of the things the church gets wrong is the testimonies we celebrate. Now, I love big testimonies, but those ain't the only testimonies. Yeah, we had a sister in our church recently got a call late in the evening. She dropped dead, standing in her kitchen. Now, I, listen, my wife and children are here, and we've heard preachers make up all types of fantastical testimonies over the years. And I've sat there with as, <laughs> with as much skepticism as anybody. You can check the fact. We got the call. She dropped dead. Heart stopped. And I went and met them at the hospital, and the doctor said, well, her husband did CPR on her. If he hadn't, she wouldn't be here. She's on a respirator back there, keeping her alive. We stood and gathered in the hospital with our sister that the doctor said she died, but the machines are keeping her alive. And we said, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Oh, we right there. It was other people in the waiting room, but y'all gonna have to excuse us while we talk to him who is able. I know I got a lot of doubt and I got a lot of sadness. I watched the machines breathe for her and all the bells and whistles, but now unto him who is able. See, if you know who he is, you'll take things to him you wouldn't take to nobody else. Oh, I'm coming your way. See, I wouldn't take a dead woman to anybody else but God. Not when the doctors say she's dead. Now I went to him. You can handle this. And about a month later, she was in church on Easter running across the front. Y'all know we rolled in the flow good fashion. (laughs) 
She ran, we ran too. And we ain't even a running kind of church, but when a dead woman shows up running, you got to run. Here's the problem. God ain't just God in that miracle. If you think we serve a big God, we only celebrate big testimonies. Oh, see that's where a lot of the church we miss helping people identify God because we bring the drug addict up to the front and we say testify how God broke you from drug addiction and then we shout we bring the person that had cancer to the front and we celebrate God healing them from cancer but you misidentify God if you only celebrate the big testimonies when I promise you he's just as much God when he helped your babies cross the street on on the way to school okay you done missed it all together you think God ain't found sought about you you think God don't care about you you think he don't hear your prayers because you don't have no I got off drugs testimony well first of all I thank you for being God enough to keep me off drugs in the first place you are God you God enough to be a keeper not just a deliverer but that's a whole other message you think God ain't hearing your prayers when it's a miracle you made it through the intersection on the other side out of town when all all the people were looking at their phone and we don't celebrate that testimony I thank God for being here I thank God for being saved I thank God for getting my babies to school every day for the last 12 years bringing me through many we don't shout over that we go uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. get to the testimony but that's the testimony oh just another day the Lord has kept me. I wish I had a few saints in here. Those are the kind of songs we used to sing. It's just another day that the Lord had kept me. We used to testify. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put food on my table. I'm standing here clothed and in my right mind. We used to say crazy stuff like a reasonable portion of health and strength. Do I got any old school saints in here? See, y'all waiting until you can run a marathon. We'll say, I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. I thank God. Because listen, if you tried to, you couldn't wake yourself up. And you waiting for him to stop by the cancer ward. When he stopped by your bedroom himself every morning of your life. He ain't big, he's everywhere. And anywhere he is God, he's all God. If you know who he was, you'd be holy in every area of your life because he cares about all of it. See, all of us got the big things we glad we don't do. I ain't going to get into that today because I'm a holiness preacher at heart, so I ain't going to do that to you today. But you don't know we like the Pharisee looking at the tax collector going, I'm glad I'm not like him. Because a lot of us justify ourselves by looking at the big things and saying, at least I didn't. At least I ain't like them. Yeah, yeah, I got drunk and high, but I still come home to my wife. You know, we'll create these really random boundaries. Y'all ain't got to act like it. I'll tell you, I'll do it. Well, at least I ain't. We'll just make up these lines that we didn't cross. You made that line up and put it right where it happened to be convenient to you. But if you knew God was everywhere, and he wasn't just big, you know he cares about you being holy even in the smallest of places. He said, consider your tongue. It's the smallest member of your body. Do they know their Bible up in here? You say you can't bridle, you try to bridle your tongue. It says it's the smaller, smallest member of your body, but it's a world of fire. Solomon teaches to catch the fox because it is the little foxes that spoil the vine. See, people don't know how life really works, and when your life falls apart, you think it was a big thing as opposed to a lot of. Okay. 
If you knew your God wasn't big, that he was everywhere, you sanctify him in every area of your life. Because he's there when you're watching TV. He's there when you're scrolling your phone. He's God everywhere. I'm ready to go home. I've had a good time myself. I don't know about you. Thank God that he ain't so big that he can't use little and insignificant people. Yeah, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. You don't pay much attention to yourself because you don't think God can use somebody like you. But that's because you don't know our God. I know some places may be too big for you, but not God. He uses the mundane, the ordinary. I know the commission used to sing, ordinary just won't do. God have a touch for you know it's fun. I oh, will. Don't mess with me. I think I can sing for real. So don't mess with me. Because I really think I can. I know I can't, but I think I can. You got to know the difference. I know I can't, but I think I can. So don't mess with me. <laughs> yeah, I know the difference. Pastors, we be knowing we can't, but we think we can. <laughs> I came to help somebody today on my way back to Lamb Christian Church. I know we think God, the ordinary, won't do. But I came to tell you, the ordinary, the mundane, absolutely will do. Okay, okay, let me teach you a little bit. I know we identify Jesus by all of the miracles he did, but he was qualified to God, not by raising dead folks from the grave, but by crossing every T and dotting every I of the law. He didn't qualify to be our savior because he told Lazarus to come out of the grave. He didn't qualify to be our savior by feeding 5,000 people. He qualified, listen to me y'all, he qualified to be the savior of the whole world in such ordinary and mundane ways that after we see him at 12 in the temple, we sum up from 12 to 30 roughly with he grew in grace and favor with God and man. It was so ordinary that the people that wrote about him chose not even to write about it. But God was watching every day of it. He was qualifying when he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet knew no sin. He was tempted when they cussed at him and he ain't cussed back. Okay, see that's what you would, you would know God will show up in the most ordinary ways. I wish I had a saint in here that knew God was omnipresent enough to give him a sacrifice that so I ain't cuss him back. I brought a, okay, okay. There's a couple things I need you to understand about this. Because if you think God is big, you think he uses big personalities, big gifts, Big talents. No churches like big gifts and big talents. Not necessarily God. That's why I don't run into a lot of gifted singers, but I love an anointed singer. Because what you'll find is if you don't know God, you'll think what you have to give him isn't big enough for him. But he's omnipresent enough to fit and two fish and five loaves of bread. Huh. See, the wrong idea of God, y'all got to know that little boy wasn't the only one with a lunch amongst thousands of people. Y'all know the story of 5,000? And they say, Jesus said, sit home and feed them. They say, ain't no food here. All we got is two fish and five loaves of bread. It's a little boy's lunch. There were thousands of people there. It's nearly impossible that that was the only lunch. We didn't invent the concept of church snacks. Y'all was late to church today because you had to stop and get you some church snacks. I'm a preacher. I see you. I know the snark church snack reach when you reach into your purse. Service going a little long today. 
Then I see y'all hand them down the road, y'all be like. You got the corner store you stop at on your way to church because you need some church snacks. Salty, sweet, you need. <laughs> it's a little, little something. If we bring snacks to church, you can't believe they didn't bring us. Right, look, I appreciate you, brother. Go ahead and do what you got to do. Don't let your blood sugar fall. I ain't mad. You got to pay attention. He said, preacher going a little long today, so we need a snack. They start passing them down to the babies. I remember I grew up in old school church where we'd be in church three, four hours. We'd get hungry and my mom start rooting around in her purse for something. Y'all remember that little stick of gum she found in the bottom of her purse? She'd give it to you and it tastes like purse. I don't know what purse tastes like, but that gum tastes like purse. Y'all know? <laughs> it tastes like purse. It does. I've never tasted a purse, but that gum that's been in the bottom of a purse for about a year tastes like purse. And I grew up in a big family, so she'd tear that gum in half, but it was great. I'd take that half stick of gum, taste like a little purse, but I'm hungry. You can't tell me that little boy was the only one there with a lunch. But people that don't know God says, what's my little lunch to how big this problem is? Why bring what I have if it can't fix the whole problem? But I came to tell you, he's all God anywhere he is God, and that's everywhere. And he ain't too big to take the little you got and change the whole world. God does ordinary and mundane on purpose. I wish you knew the God that you serve. Jesus in his earthly ministry, he could have picked anybody to be his disciples y'all ain't gonna make me teach this bible he had rich young rulers coming to him he could have went to the sadducees and the pharisees and all the powerful people of the day and said you all be my apostles so everybody would believe me but he picked 12 ordinary mundane nobodies as a matter of fact they identified this when they saw the boldness of peter and john they perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned men and they marvel but guess what they knew about these illiterate uneducated undegreed men is they're nobodies but they've been with Jesus I need a few nobodies that's been with Jesus I need a few people that don't have nothing to offer nobody except the fact that I've been with Jesus I ain't got a resume that'll get me a big job but I've been with Jesus I don't have a lot of eloquent words but I've been with Jesus I don't know a lot of scripture but I've been with Jesus He ain't too big to use you. Matter of fact, he like using people like you. I wish you knew your Bible, but as Paul writing to his Corinthian church, he said, there's not many wise among us. There's not many powerful. There's not many notable. But God, in his wisdom, chose the foolish things or the base things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. He loved turning the world upside down with little seemingly insignificant people that are anointed and empowered by the Holy Ghost. I wish you knew your Savior, Jesus. That's why he didn't carry nothing wrong with him. The Bible says he has a scepter of righteousness. You know what a scepter is? That's the staff that's gold with jewels that kings hold. And it's so expensive it's to let you know that whatever you ask, I can do it because this stick I'm holding in my hand is enough to pay for everything. So when you come into the king's court, he would have a scepter and he'd reach it out to you when your request was granted. And Jesus didn't come with a golden scepter with Jews. Came from a nothing family, from a nobody town that they said about it, can any good thing come from Nazareth? I came to tell you it most certainly can. Can anything good come from Pontiac? I came to tell you, it most certainly can. Can any good thing come from a family like mine? It most certainly can. Can any good thing come from a dropout teen mother? Yes, it can. Can it come from somebody with a record and bad credit? It most certainly can. Because God chose those who were poor but rich in faith. Yeah. 
he was so intent on letting us know that he ain't too big, that Jesus never carried anything when he went to use, do miracles. He was so much God that anything in his hand became tool for the miracle. He didn't carry a magic wand. He ain't carry no pixie dust. He just look around and say, well, all I got is spitting mud, but this spitting mud is going to do to open blinded eyes. He ain't carry a platinum American Express. What do you have? Give it to me and I'll feed everybody. Anything in God's hand is enough for God to be God in it. So he just look around and say, what, what, what do we got here? I'm going to just use this. He ain't carry nothing. Matter of fact, when he sent his disciples out, he said, y'all don't take nothing either. Because I don't want you to get me confused with anything you carry. Because I'm everywhere. I'm in whatever town you go to, whatever house you step foot in. Poor or rich, I'm there. And I can be all that I am. So I came to tell you today. Number one, don't count yourself out. The devil loves telling you why God can't use you. Remember, saints, his job is he is the accuser of the brethren. Don't let the devil accuse you to yourself so you count yourself out. Listen, God knows your ways, and he still said to acknowledge me with all of them. He knows our uprisings and our downsetting. He still said, I want all your ways. He know your bad habits and your issues. He said, I want all those ways. He knows those generational curses and those bad habits you got from your mama. He said, I want all those ways. He said, I know your low self-esteem and your bad self-talk. I want all those ways. I know your sharp tongue and your biting wit. I want all those ways. Uh, he knows your depression and your anxiety. He said, I want all those ways. Uh, he knows your self-defeating behaviors and your addiction to gambling he wants all your ways he know that you are functioning alcoholic he wants all your ways he know you got daddy issues but he wants all your ways he know you got rejection issues he wants all your ways he know you ain't felt love since your mama left you he wants all your ways he know you make a mess everywhere you go he wants all your ways he know you don't cause trouble in every relationship you had and he still wants all your ways because he's all God anywhere he is God and that's every way bring it all to him bring it all to him he said I want all your ways and I'll direct your path lastly I just want to make sure that we know God ain't just using you when the building is finished. So the things they're going to want to put in your bio are going to be the big things. But I came to tell you, your crown when you get to heaven it ain't going to have built a building on it. It's going to have stopped by the funeral. The many crowns that you're going to throw and cast at his feet ain't going to have packed the church. It's going to ask the young lady, how you doing? What God is going to write on your crown are the things that nobody else saw. It's going to be those small things that showed you were actually faithful to God. Because it's a lot of people doing big things. They're faithful to the crowd, not to God. That's why I was so blessed about the words that were shared about your pastor. See, because you find out, let's say if you seek me in secret, I'll reward you openly. See, I know pastors that don't know a member unless the camera is on. If the camera ain't on, I dare you to try to talk to them. And I know them too. I'm sorry to inform you of some of your favorite internet preachers. You wouldn't run running them in person. But when he said, he, he got on the Zoom with us and asked me. I was sitting there quiet. I was listening. He should say, and he asked me my name. And ask me how I'm doing. That's going on a crown, my brother. And we need to love the things that God loves. So God gives us pastors after his heart. So he cares about everything about you, even the little things. 
So when you got a pastor that will love and serve and teach and stay faithful in the little things, you can't wait till a big anniversary to say you're God's man. You can't just wait to the big accomplishments to say, now I know we got the right pastor. No, when he stopped by your house after you lost a loved one. When he stopped by the hospital when you ain't feeling good and stand at the edge of your bed and quote some scriptures and say, God bless you. Now, he ain't got to stay there all night because God can fit in his five-minute visit. Y'all ain't going to let me free the pastor. He ain't stay all night. No, I serve a God that is everywhere. And he's all God. I ain't got to pray all night. Okay, I'm going to shift it to another message if I do that. That visit, that is confirmation that you have a pastor after God's heart. Because we don't serve a big God, we serve an everywhere God. We serve an in all your ways kind of God. I thank God for you, brother. I came here to preach, but then when I heard the words that were said about you, I said, oh, we're talking about the right thing. Because those are the things that God cares about. And I wish you would make certain, Trinity, that you do not wait for grand occasions. Big accomplishments. Big goals being met to acknowledge that God is in the midst. And that God's hand is on the man of God. Can we give the Lord a hand praise? Can we bless a God who knows that you're going to need somebody to pick up the phone when you call late. Yep, you're going to need somebody that'll be willing to meet you down at the church and talk to your bad son. And unfortunately, in church right now, that's not what we celebrate. We celebrate people that can rack up thousands of views on YouTube. pack people in stadiums and those those are the videos they post on IG right y'all see I had to unfollow all those churches I said I can't do this <laughs> everybody church looked like there's 10,000 people there that's in the video y'all they've called me there to preach and it's just the front row and they keep panning across the front row over and over again I, came to, I promise you all hey they don't look like they look on their videos but that tells you what they think is important and what they think reflects God that's why God says of himself, if two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. You got to know what God and his word says about him. And I honor you, my brother, for doing the real work. The real work, the work that honors God. So if we honor God, we honor you today. Will you stand to your feet and honor your pastor for being a man of God today? <laughs> Bringing God even into the smallest of places. I love you, my dear brother. May the blessings and favor of God be upon you in every area of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you today. God bless you, man. Come on, give God praise for the man of God today and for the word of God that he brought on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve an awesome God who can do anything but fail, can take anybody, anything, and get glory. He'll get glory out of you. I know you feel like you don't have much to offer God, but God will take whatever you will surrender. Surrender yourself today. Whatever issues you have, surrender them today. Whatever brokenness you have, surrender it today. Lord, take my life. Doesn't look like much, but God, I give it to you. If you are here today and you need Jesus and you realize that today, someone who will love you in spite of you, Someone who went to Calvary and died in your place. No matter how difficult life has seemed, he'll make it brand new. Anybody here been made brand new? Anybody here been broken and just 
toe up from the flow up and the Lord loved you in spite of you, saved you in spite of you, delivered you in spite of you. There ought to be some witnesses in the house today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. God's word says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Anybody, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If there's someone here today who says, I need Jesus. I want Jesus. We announce the open door of the church. Jesus himself is the door. He said, if you'll come in by me, I'll never turn you away. Is there someone today who says, I want Jesus. I need Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Receive him today. Trust me. I'll never leave you. Come on, right now. His blood was shed for you. I'll never leave you if you will only trust me. Trust me. Come on, come on. Trust me. Now I'm going to ask you to help me with this invitation today. There are people sitting around you. Some of them you know, some of them you don't know. Some of them say, I can't get up in that big crowd. I want you to be their encourager today. I want you to turn around and ask someone, did that word speak to you today? Do you need to come to Jesus today? Go ahead and talk to somebody. And if in fact they need someone to walk with them, tell them, I'll walk with you. Encourage them today. Upstairs, encourage someone today. Downstairs, encourage someone today. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. He said, I'll fight your battle. Come on, y'all. I'll fight Surrender your everything. Your I'll fight your battles if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me, if you will only trust me. God be praised. Amen, amen. Have we had a great time on today in worshiping the Lord? We have been blessed by the Lord through the word of God. We praise and pray. pray. We, we got some coming for prayer now. Trust me, yeah. if you will only trust me, he oh. said trust me, trust me, if you will only This lets me know it's not too late for you, if you are contemplating. Ooh. Make your way, make your way, make your way. All you gotta do is just trust me. He's 
somebody else who was supposed to be down here also make your way we'll pray for you God wants to work on you come on come on come on All you gotta do is just trust. If you trust in me, all you gotta do is just. Every little thing is just trust in me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. These daughters of yours are down front today because your spirit and your word has spoken into their heart. Meet every need. Empower, bless, renew, deliver. God be glorified today. Have your way. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us, make us after your will while we are waiting, yielded, and still have your own way. For restoration, God, we give you praise. For the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we give you praise. For sins washed away, we give you praise. Thank you, God. Thank you for a new thing that you do in here today. For life, for joy, for peace, for the love of Jesus that passes all understanding as well. We give you praise, oh God. Restore them. We pray, Lord God, that you will push the reset button right now in their hearts. And that they will be brand new creatures in Christ Jesus all over again. Lord, you are the one who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask, think, or imagine. And we give you praise. Work now. Work now, God. Work now. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. And the whole church said, Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, give God praise for them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah. Mm. Trust him. 
trust him. Trust him. Just whisper that to a neighbor. Just tell him, trust him. Somebody just needed to hear that today. Tell somebody else that same word. Just say, trust him. Awesome, awesome. Pastor, I can't think of a better way to have a pastor's anniversary. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I want, I want to encourage you now to, in, to receive special presentations coming from Sister Felicia Jennings, Trustee Vernon Baker, Deaconess Janice McGee, and Deacon Robert McGee in that order. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise him. Amen. Um, we give God all the glory today. Um, we thank God for uh, your life, Pastor Tolbert. I personally thank God for your life. Um, as everybody knows, um, I'm blessed to be covered by two pastors. But I thank God that the anointing that is on your life rests on my life and the whole staff. If, all, if I can get all the staff to stand, all the staff that works along with pastor. Amen. Y'all give them a hand. Amen. We like to do something extra special for him every year. Um, he is deserving of it. Um, he is faithful to us, so we like to be faithful to him. So, uh, Reverend Jones, if you could please. Amen. Pastor, this is for you. We hope you enjoy it. Amen. This is some goodies in there. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, Lady Ashley. And you can use it too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bless y'all. Good morning, family. To God be the glory. Pastor, 12 years, 12 years of leadership, 12 years of teaching and preaching the gospel, 12 years of just being you. On behalf of the trustee ministry, and our immediate past chairman, Robert Harmon. We want to say, Pastor, we love you. We adore you. Lady Ashley, we love you. We adore you. And it wouldn't be me if I didn't say, when y'all came in the door this morning, y'all clean as chitlins. I mean, y'all clean. You know, when we were trying to figure out, you know, as trustees, you know, we are the ones that are in charge of making sure that the infrastructure is in place and we tend to be very observant. Now, we couldn't help but notice that pastor slimming down. Looking good, brother, looking good. So we're saying to ourselves, what, what can we get him? So I went and talked to my secret confidant, and Felicia said, pastor likes polo. I'm like, Ralph Lauren polo? You know, most of the trustees are, you know, are, are of a mature age. We want a fixed income. But it's my pastor. So I was designated, I went to the polo store, I got a polo bag. I was able to talk him out of that. And when you, you know, when you're getting slim and trim, you know, you need some new clothes. We get that. You know, we're intelligent people. So, Pastor, I just want to share with the congregation so they know what we got you. Now, I said it was a polo bag, but we got you some Adidas socks. I just want, to, <laughs> I just want to make sure that you, you know, you wear them in good health. No, no, <laughs> Pastor, don't be pulling on them. <laughs> it, was, it was from the value bin. Don't, don't, don't pull on them, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, I'm, 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 of course, I'm joking. 
I'm joking. Pastor, on behalf of the trusting ministry, we'd like to present you with this uh, gift card uh, to Polo. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Look, you don't pay me nothing. I was going to take the mic. Good afternoon, church family. I am here to uh, honor and appreciate our first lady. And uh, Lady Ashley, there are... Woohoo! Lady Ashley, we, your church family, have many things that we admire and appreciate about you that endear you to us. We love that you worship the Lord with all your heart and soul. We love that you are a worshiper and that you worship him according to the word of God in spirit and truth. We love the sweetness of you and your husband's relationship. And as the urban poet Tupac says, we know that he is, that you are the sugar in his Kool-Aid and the sweet peaches in his peach cobbler. We love the motherly interactions between you, John, and Jade, and we know that there are many, and pray that there are many amazing family times to come. We love the family that you share with us, including our pastor and the way that you support and love him. We are not naive enough to believe that you are perfect or that you have a perfect life because we know that life gets heavy sometimes and it gets hard sometimes. But what we love is the grace and the faithfulness with which you handle these things. We appreciate the fact that even though sometimes you don't want to, you come anyhow. We love that about you. Girl, we love when you sing, when you play, and when you direct the choir. We love all of the spiritual and musical gifts that you share with the church. We love that you are humble, approachable, and easy to be with. Not only do we love you as our first lady, Ashley, LaShawn, Deshaun, Wade, Tobert, we like you as a person, as a woman. That's hard because women can be tough sometimes, but you are amazing to us. Lady Ashley, we are so grateful that you are our first lady. And on behalf of your Trinity Missionary Baptist Church family, we want to share these small gifts to honor and appreciate you. We know it's not enough, but we still want to just say thank you for being who you are. Let's give our first lady. Y'all, let's stand up for our first lady. We love her. I'm not going to tell y'all what it is, but it's going to be fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I got a bag, too. <laughs> Before I present uh, my presentation, we have a special presentation. We had to amend our agenda because Pastor Tobert is the first pastor that we've had in some time that have children. So how could we not do something to recognize the twins? So Demila would TYB take the stage. Pastor Tobert, Sister Ashley, um, first of all, Pastor Tobert, thank you so much for all that you do for um, TYB, we love you dearly. Um, you always have our back and you always look out for us. And so um, we do have a special gift for you, but we also have a special gift for John and Jade. We tried to wake John up, but uh, he's slain in the spirit out there. And so, <laughs> and so just on behalf of TYB, um, all of us, we wanna thank John and Jade for their energy, 
that they give us. They come on Tuesdays for choir and dance. Um, Jade is dressed in that pretty color red. That's why she got that nice red bag over there. And so um, we just want to thank you, Sister Ashley, but also thank our TYB babies, John and Jade. So Nalea has Jade's gift and Miles and Mia, they have John's gift and I have your gift. Thank you, Pastor Tobert. Amen. Amen. Thank you, TYB. One of the other amendments that I'm making to the agenda is I think it's always appropriate to have our First Lady say a few remarks because not only is he her husband, but he's also her pastor. So, Lady Ashley, I'm going to let you say a few words to, about your pastor, Dr. Tober. Praise the Lord, everybody. To God be the glory for all the great things he has done. I'm not much of a talker, and I tell people all the time that I usually sing everything I have to say. But um, to this church, to all the ministers, to every, the staff, everybody who helps out, God bless you. We love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much again. And to my wonderful husband. And I tell them all the time, my wonderful husband, you are just an amazing, amazing man. You're smart, gifted, blessed, accomplished, fine, <laughs> generous, affectionate, warm, easy to talk to. And at the end of the day, that's my Teddy Ruxpin. If, you know, a little bit older. Y'all know what that is back in the day. But uh, I just want to say thank you, and I love you so much. Keep up the good work. God bless you and all of your endeavors. And Trinity Church, the best is yet to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Pastor Tobert, I asked and prayed and asked the Holy Spirit, what should I say about the man of God, and how should we thank him for 12 years of amazing service? Let's give him a big hand for 12 years. Well, there are two things that I think are pivotal in this process. One, everybody is not meant to be a pastor. One of the things that Paul taught me in Ephesians was being a pastor is one of the spiritual gifts. Paul says, I will give you apostles, I will give you prophets, and I will give you pastor teachers. Pastor and teachers. So in the corporate world, we align people based on the job descriptions. Do we believe that our pastor is a pastor and a teacher? Amen, amen. One of the other things Paul said, pastors are shepherds, and they take the same responsibility literally as a shepherd to nurture, to protect, to grow, to move forward, to do all the things that a shepherd do to protect their sheep. But one of the things that I'm grateful for is pastor introduced this frank list, and we're like, wow, we got a frank list, and it's hard, and it's hard. And these folks we're trying to connect are hard to deal with. They won't move. Pastor told me, D, just keep talking about Jesus. Don't mention church. So we keep talking about Jesus. But the thing that, I, that, that was revealed to me by the Holy Spirit, it's not the pastor's responsibility to find the sheep. Paul said it's our responsibility to find the sheep. As long as he's preaching the word and teaching the word, the sheep will come. So pastor, on behalf of the entire Trinity family, I present you this gift from Trinity Missionary Baptist Church. Also, I also have another gift to present to you that was dropped off to me. 
This is from Pastor Jones from the Welcome Baptist Church. He wanted to congratulate you on your 12th anniversary and present you this gift. So with that being said, I'd like to invite all of you to attend our strolling reception next door in our educational building on the third floor. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, brothers and sisters, let us receive our pastor, the Reverend Dr. John DeVar Tolbert. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. With his power he has saved us with his blood. With his blood he has saved us with his power he has raised us. And he continues to show himself strong and continues to show himself mighty. And it is our uh, most humble privilege uh, to serve this local body of baptized believers for now these 12 years again to God be the glory. Will you just give God praise? Indeed, indeed, he has been good uh, to us, the good days and the bad days, but it is my testimony as I have shared with you over these years that some way, somehow, the good days just keep on outweighing the bad days. So we are grateful for what God has done. Will you just also join me in giving God praise for this man of God, Pastor Dorian Cass. Come on, y'all. Give God praise for the message and the messenger. Hallelujah. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. My God today. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will share. You know, I know he's been introduced, but... Is it, is it pastor's anniversary day? Amen. Thank you so much. Um, pastor Cass and I met haphazardly. Amen. Corey Davis and Pastor Cass are, are cousins. And y'all pray for me. This is one of my traumas. Uh, that when I, was, when I was young, my father would take me to his barber shop to get a haircut. Well, y'all know my father, for those of you who remember, he didn't have a whole lot of hair. So it wasn't a whole priority to him, which meant that it really wasn't a priority for me. And then uh, one of my best friends, Corey Davis, as y'all can see, he don't have a whole lot of hair. And uh, so we were trying to find a barber in high school. And we were going to a cat from over at Southville High School and uh, he graduated and went on to college. And so Corey said, listen, my cousin is cutting hair. I was like, your cousin? And I'm, this, is, this is during the day of the Timmy and the, the bowl fade, you know, they put a bowl on top of your head and just, I was like, man, you know, Corey, you don't have a whole lot of hair. And Corey had always wore his hair low because of genetics and all that stuff from way back when. And so I was like, man, you sure he can cut hair? He's like, he got it, he got it. Let me tell y'all something. We went to the cast house and their, their father is Bishop Adolphus Cass and Bishop Cass was already big in the Christian movement for me as a child. I'm like, man, that's Bishop Cass. <laughs> and he's like, no, that's my cousin. It's like, no, man, that's Bishop Cass up there. These, this, is, this is Bishop Cass' family. This ain't none of your family. Only to find out that they were indeed family. And so I met Andre, who became our barber, from high school, then Andre went to Kalamazoo College, so he became my barber in college, uh, even through graduation until he went into something called the Seconds Complex. Then he became my doctor, amen. So I honor this man of God, I honor their family. It is one of the great families in Christendom. As you heard his, his pedigree, he doesn't have to preach because that's what he has to do because he doesn't have anything else to do. He has yielded to the call of God in his life. He should be a doctor somewhere, but God has called him. Amen. 
And the same for his brother, same for his family. And so we honor you, Pastor Cass, Lil Dorian, amen. We are grateful for what God has done. He is the epitome of David's story, that if Saul was the, if, if Samuel was to come in to anoint one of the sons, you'd be like, Dory? <laughs> <laughs> so praise God, praise God. I am grateful. So as we celebrate Frank's list, I'm glad to have, he's not on my Frank's list per se, but he is a friend and been a friend for a long time. One more time, y'all, show Pastor Cass some love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me honor our family, our, fa our, our church family, our leadership. Thank you so very much for your support over these 12 years. I was uh, sharing with uh, Sister Joan Love last night, and uh, she was recapitulating and reminded me of some of the stories uh, from 2011 till now. My God, today. <laughs> and so in my visit with her, uh, it just reminded us of where, how good God has been, truly. Because at the end of the day, when you are doing something for God, you don't have a, t a whole lot of time to pay attention to all of the details because you're always moving forward. And that's been my story, always moving forward, always trying to get to what is next that God would have us to do uh, because it is my determination that Trinity Church will be better whenever God would call me from this place. And whoever God would ever send to this place, whenever he would decide, I pray that they would find a strong, healthy ministry, as I did find when I came here uh, in 2011. And so it is the goal of every pastor to make the ministry better for the next pastor that will come along whenever that will be. And so I'm grateful for the support ministries, our deacons, our trustees, our official family, our deaconess. Thank you so, so very much uh, for the leadership that you've give, given and the support that you have given to help us to get to this point. Come on, give God praise for them. And then our, our staff, oh man, so they catch it. I, I have privilege to be many of their pastor, uh, but at the same time, I'm their boss. And so sometimes it's a, a juggling act because am I responding as pastor? Are they receiving it as pastor? Or are they receiving it as boss? And sometimes it has to be a healthy dose of both. But I am eternally grateful for the amazing staff that we have at Trinity Missionary Baptist Church. And family, I think we ought to just thank God together for our church staff. Come on, we can do better than that. All the time, all the time. Thank y'all. Felicia has come in and just uh, transformed some things, and we're grateful uh, for, for the work and how she's leading and pushing us uh, to, be, to be better. And our staff has responded overwhelmingly, and we're grateful uh, for the fact that we know that we are stronger, we know that we are wiser, we know that we are better, we know that God is not through uh, with us yet. And so y'all continue to pray for us, but one more time, show our staff some love. I get to celebrate your families all the time, but I'm grateful to have my own family to celebrate today. I'm going to ask my sister cousin to stand up, uh, Shanita and, and Kalis, her son, her cousin, Kalis. So uh, when God called my sister home, uh, God gave me a brother and a sister, and I'm grateful for my first cousins who have stepped in to be my surrogate big brother and sister, and Shanita is here. She's one of them. And uh, we're great. We love you. Thank you for hanging out with us uh, today. And Kayla, thank you for coming uh, as well. Give God, give God praise for her. Always on time. She, she has been a tremendous help with the twins. Pray, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. And so, you know somebody loves you when they come at the time. Not when everything is great, but when you need them, they just show up. So she came for look, like over a month and a half. Uh, when the twins came into the world and she was there with us. We appreciate you, Shanita. Thank you so, so very much. Amen. Now, let me say this about our children. Uh, John and Jade are on fire for Jesus already. They're already singing about the Lord, already dancing for the Lord. Praise God. And, and I want you all to know that John, when it comes to his academic progress, he can go to any school he want to go to. Amen. Praise the Lord but he can't join any organization that he wants to join. It's only one. It's only one. But the little girl, now y'all been putting pressure on her. Amen. 
Y'all been putting pressure on her. Now, she is free to do whatever she want to do. She can go to whatever school she want to go to, and her mama going to pay for it in Jesus' name. And she can be a part of whatever organization she wants. She want to wear green, she can wear green. She want to wear pink, she can wear pink. She want to wear red, she can wear red. She want to wear blue, she can wear blue. Now, the boy don't have them same options, okay? All right. He don't have those options, but the girl does. So, you know, she's dressed in white, and so many pink dresses came to the house. So many red dresses came to the house. Let that child grow up, y'all. Amen. Don't, don't put so much pressure on her. She don't, know, she don't know what to do. Amen. Y'all love her whatever she decides. But the boy don't have no choice. Amen. 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 My wife's brother is here. I saw him try to sneak in from California. Amen. Will y'all give God praise for my brother in love? He was up there. Amen. All the way from California. Thank you so very much. And then all of our family, FTVs, thank you so very much for being here this morning. We are grateful for each and every one of you uh, that share with us in this place. Give God praise for the FTVs. FTVs. FTV, we see you. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us uh, this morning. Now, uh, we're on our way out, but before I do that, we are going to um, transformation this afternoon because of the way Easter came. That's how it is this year. And so what better way to celebrate the pastor's anniversary than going to church with the pastor uh, this afternoon? I know it's going to be 80 degrees, uh, but we're going to have you out well before uh, the sun go down in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have honored you, and I'm grateful for you. Thank you for the privilege to give me to serve uh, as your senior pastor. But much of who I am today uh, would not be possible without the wonderful woman uh, that God has blessed me with. Bible says that a man who findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. And you can't make me doubt that. Amen. Uh, Ashley, I love you and thank you for how you support me and this church. And church, again, I know where we've been. I know our culture. I know the history. But I've encouraged you to love on her and to pray for her and to honor her because when you're not there, she takes care of me. And that's what you want to be praying for. The woman that I'm laying down next to while I'm snoring and slobbering, you want her to have good thoughts. Like, Lord, cover him in Jesus' name. You want her to lay her hands on me gently. Lord, bless him in Jesus' name. You don't want her saying, mm, if he stopped breathing one more time, I'm just going to put this pillow right on over there and just say he just went on in his sleep something happened I don't I don't understand it amen so pray for her because she takes care of me amen she takes care of our children she takes care of our little dog she holds it down and we are grateful uh, for her your gifts are amazing uh, your presence is amazing and you certainly have brought fragrance to this house and we are grateful come on y'all love on her one more time We're going next door uh, for the strolling uh, reception. Looking forward to hanging out with you, speaking to each and every one of you. Uh, there are multiple prayer requests this morning, but one of, of, of urgency, and that is we're praying for uh, the family of Deacon Richard Strong. Uh, Deacon Strong was faithful uh, to this church family, and he and his wife, Sister Cheryl, uh, have moved to North Carolina, and God has called him home from earthly labor to eternal rest and reward and so we will share with them uh, on Tuesday as we celebrate Deacon Strong's life uh, there in North Carolina so I want us to be uh, praying for them that while she had to move out of necessity to take care of her mother I uh, still been very much connected and connected to our church family amen and so I'm asking that you would pray for sister strong pray for their family uh, that God would give her some supernatural strength uh, during this time can we do that amen let's all stand together all right. For me? Somebody's calling me? I'm sorry. Deacon, if you want to get All right. Two things. Deacon Ewan, God bless you. Deacon Ewan has a lot of family and friends. Come on, y'all celebrate Deacon Ewan for getting his Frank's list here. And... 
So, uh, Samika uh, sent me something this week um, that so completely encouraged me, and I want to share that uh, with you, um, Samika James. And she sent me a birthday invitation that she sent out to her family and friends. This is what she said. She said, Pastor, if we can party together, surely we ought to be able to worship together. And it's a birthday invitation that says, join me as I celebrate my birthday in worship on Saturday, April 24th. And she sent this out to all of her family and her friends. I just think that that's Frank's list and blessed to be a blessing stuff coming alive in the life of the body of Christ. So Samika, we salute you and we look forward to hanging out with the family uh, during that time. Amen. Amen. Am I forgetting anything else? It's time to go. Y'all hungry? Amen. To God be the glory. Praise God from whom all blessings flow this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O oh lord our strength and our redeemer go in peace and may the lord be with you in jesus name amen